Hi, this is Scott. I really appreciate our sponsors because they make the show possible. Today's show is sponsored by Developer Express. Become a UI superhero with Dev Express controls and libraries. Deliver elegant.net solutions that address customer needs today by leveraging your existing knowledge. You can build next generation touch enabled solutions for tomorrow. You can download your free 30 day trial at dx.hanselminutes.com. That's dx.hanselminutes.com. From HanselMinutes.com, it's Hansel Minutes, a weekly discussion with web developer and technologist Scott Hanselman. This is Lawrence Ryan announcing show number 524. In this episode, Scott talks with venture capitalist Arlen Hamilton about investing in underrepresented tech founders. Hi, this is Scott Hanselman. This is another episode of Hansel Minutes. Today, I'm talking with Arlen Hamilton from Backstage Capital. We met at a startup event, and you are a VC. And that's just, VC is just such an impressive thing to me because, <laughs> like, it just seems like it would be inaccessible people in ivory towers with bags of money. That's right. Yeah, that's me. Is that pretty much it? We are <laughs> yeah, in your, you, oh. That's it. That's the interview is over. <laughs> we're, we're in your ivory you, tower right yeah, now. Yeah. Where is the bag of money, though? <laughs> I'm still chasing it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, when when someone is a VC, does that mean that you are sitting on some pile of money, whether it be right. yours or someone else's? Right. So the reason that I'm venture capital and not angel uh, mm -hmm. is because I am investing other people's money. Mm. So other people have entrusted me with their, um, uh, you know, amount of money. It's a small amount of money compared to most VC funds. Okay. But it is VC. It's just the the definition is is investing in other people's cash. Okay, so then an angel investor would be someone that just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like, uh, you know, you, let's say that you had $10 million of your own money, and I have an idea, I come to you, and you are my angel, and give me that money, and then there's a contract involved. That's angel investors? Right. So, yeah, so most angel investors, I mean, it ranges, but most angel investors invest anywhere from 5 to 10K to you know, a million of their own money. Mm. Usually it's in the 10K to 100K range. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do so either pre-seed before you've uh, raised from outside sources. Mm -hmm. So like usually an angel, that's why they're called angels because they kind of swoop in and mm. save the day a little bit okay. and kind of get you to the next step so that you are then able to uh, get to the metrics where you can talk to VCs. So because my fund is so small, um, I kind of... I'm kind of in the middle there. Um, so people see me, I like to call it VC money with an angel vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, so people um, kind of see me early, they see me earlier than they would see a lot of VCs. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to ask how big your fund is? Yeah. So it's, um, we're raising a few million. I, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. So it's less than 10 million, okay. more than one. And um, yeah. It's going well. So you said that an angel might invest like 10K. That's right. Like when I hear a number like that, you know, I mean, I don't have big money, but if I wanted to buy like a Honda, mm -hmm. I could probably raise 10, 15 grand and go and buy my sure. Honda. Sure. Why would I want to go to an angel if I could, you know, go to the bank? As a, as a founder? As a, as a person who's founding something. Well, a lot of times it's really hard to get money from the bank. I mean, some, oh. sometimes you can. It just depends on your personal profile. A lot of times, um, you know, I don't know too much about the, the lending space, but except, except for my experience and what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just simply hard to access more than 10,000. And a lot of times you need, mm. you're raising like, you know, at least 50K. If I you're, see. if you're very early. Right. And so you, you don't necessarily just have one angel. You'll have, you'll try to put together a round of maybe three or four angels that know each other or mm -hmm. that you can, you know, convince to, to come along. And so an individual or two founders who are working on an idea, um, they're not necessarily going to be able to convince their local bank to, uh, entrust them mm -hmm. with that. Probably. And they don't want to take on that sort of debt either. Uh, in most cases, you don't want to take on, you know, that sort of personal debt. Mm -hmm. And I would guess, uh, kind of answering my own question, that if I was going to buy a car, at least if the thing goes bad, they're going to take my car. That's right. 
Yeah, yeah. So it gets really murky when you kind of, uh, especially early on, you know, th- there's a lot of debt that happens later. Mm-hmm. And in fact, uh, a lot of these early rounds uh, of angel money and VC money are um, convertible notes, which is which is convertible debt into equity. So it starts off as um, you're writing a note to someone that says, I'm, you're lending me a 25K okay. angel note. Right. And if I hit certain uh, keep, you know, c- certain um, milestones, milestones, thank you, um, then that that converts to equity. So most of the time, it's like if I if we're raising and you're saying that my company is worth five hundred thousand, you're giving me ten thousand. If I raise, um, well, you don't actually put a value on it, but that's sort of what's what what it's where it's coming from. But you're saying if I raise five hundred thousand on a two million valuation, okay, then your money be, uh, turns into your debt that you've given me turns into equity. It converts. Converts into ah. equity. And um, you're getting a better rate than the person who um, comes in later. Because you came in early and because you came in early, risk. you took more of the risk. Uh, usually, you ask for a discount, and this is from like a, an angel and a VC sure. point of view. Usually, you ask for some sort of discount, somewhere between ten and twenty five percent discount. Uh-huh. So, you know something, and I think that's that's great for both sides because you're you're taking the most risk. You know, if if that person decides to um, go to Mexico, it you're not necessarily going to be able to get your your loan back, even though it is mm-hmm. a convertible note so then people at that level need to be like it's like plan roulette it's like all absolutely. or nothing you're gonna you have to be totally ready to lose every oh, absolutely you have uh, I, I forgot who called it this but it is like a lottery ticket hmm. um I, i'm sure a lot of people call it that but it's someone in particular i can't remember but yeah it is like a, a you know if you're if you decide to invest uh, uh i know who it was david rose in his book mm-hmm. um angel investing if you decide to invest in five companies you know, and you spend fifty thousand. You're just going to have to assume that you're never going to see that money again, mm-hmm. and that that's why you have to. If you're an angel, you need to be doing this for something other than just returns, because it's such a risk. That's why it's <laughs> called venture. What is it they say about the lottery that it's for entertainment purposes? Yeah, exactly. Right, and uh, you know, it's also important to have um, a large uh, portfolio mm. and to kind of hedge your bets. Especially if you're dealing with, if you're doing this on the side, if this is something you're trying out and you're, 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 you know, investing in friends or people in the community, community that you know, um, definitely don't put all of your eggs in one basket Mm -hmm. because you're just gonna, you're, you're really, uh, playing roulette at that point. When someone invests, and we're still talking about angel and we'll kind of go from angel to VC in a second. When someone invests like that, um, how many strings are attached? Is it all depend on, depend on the person's personality? Like if I gave money, I might say, all right, well, call me in a year and let me know how it goes. Right. Or am I going to start rolling in every week and like leaning over your shoulder oh, and looking, right. at, looking at your PowerPoint and Yeah. So ho- hopefully you don't do that because you'll really start to annoy a founder if you do that. Mm-hmm. So it just, it depends also like what your, what your value add is as an investor. So. Um, a lot of times when you start investing angel money, it's because if, if you're in the position to do so, you know, you're accredited, which means you make 200,000 a year or more, or you have a million in assets. Mm. Usually that's the case. Um, that means that you have some sort of, some level of success and, and you have some level of expertise. So you want to share that with other people. Um, and this is a way to do it. A friend of mine calls it, uh, angel investing, like, paying to work because Mm. she invests money Mm -hmm. and um, that kind of gives her the access to the, these exciting founders working on exciting things to her. And then because she has worked on something, you know, some in some way um, she has this expertise that she can give and this knowledge, Mm -hmm. but you also really want to be aware of, if you're needed, <laughs> you know, it's one thing to say, yes, I'm available. Call me or email me if you have a question mm. or we can do like a, uh, a quarterly meeting or a monthly phone call or something. Right. It's another thing to have someone who put in 10000 to a $200,000 round who is calling you like 
every other day and asking how things are going. That's not okay. Mm. It's just, you're getting, you want your company, these companies to do the best they can. Right. And two things. One is you're getting in their way. The second is if you have to help them that much, you've probably made a bad investment out the gate. Mm. They need to be self-sufficient and you need to, uh, ex- um, to be a nice accessory to that and be helpful in certain ways. I see. So you're not buying your way into being a third founder unless you are bringing big money and office space. Exactly. And it goes both ways because sometimes founders um, can be needy, uh, especially early, and they can ask too much of you as Hmm. an investor. Um, So there, it, it is sort of, it has a lot of, there's a lot of variables, but it is sort of figuring out that, how, you know, that, um, balance. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what angels do. Sure. You are running a VC fund. Right. So then you are the VC. Right. And now do you have kind of two jobs? You have to go around and find companies that are uh, worthy of investment, but then you also need to find people who want to invest. So you, that's you, right. You're kind of the middle, the middle person. Yes. Yes. So, um, and every, the, the cool thing is, I think that's why I was kind of fascinated by this. Um, is that, you know, founders go around if they, if they make it to the point where they're past angel, uh, or they're needing also an addition of uh, VC money, they're going to hear a lot of no's and they're going to, you know, sometimes take it personally and wonder, you know, why, why me? But every single venture fund, venture fund that they have asked has had to do the same thing. Hmm. They've had to go around and ask other people for money and that those are LPs or limited partners. Okay. And that can be a variety of, of, types of entities and individuals um but th- they they've gone through that whole process too and the goal is to raise raise the fund have the fund raised and go out and deploy capital and then maybe 2 to 3 years later after you've uh, done done great things with that fund and you've deployed 75% or so of it you go out and raise another one what usually happens though is that you finish raising a fund or you it takes you months and months and months to raise a fund maybe a couple of years you're investing as you go and um by the time you're done raising very soon after you need to raise your second fund hmm. either to um have more seed money or to follow on and and support the companies you've already invested in in the next round. So it's a constant it's constantly both. Isn't isn't that kind of like the balance of campaigning to become a senator and then actually doing the work of a senator? Sure, Cuz sometimes exactly. I'm like are you all working or do yeah. you just, you know, want to exactly get elected? Exactly that. Yeah, and you know, I, I keep hearing people um, you know, I'm 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 not very I'm not an insider Silicon Valley insider or anything like that, but I hang around with a lot of people in Silicon Valley and I keep hearing this thing about uh, founders who are supposedly uh, falling in love with fundraising and I want to meet them and ask them why they fall in love with it. And I get it. People are, if you have a hot product and people are throwing money at you and you have to decide between this million dollar check and that million dollar check, I guess that could be fun. But I, I find it to be my least favorite part. All I want to do is work with founders. And the capital is that tool that that makes that happen. But all I want to do is work with founders. I don't want to go to dinners and schmooze and blah, blah, blah. I just want to uh, ina- help enable founders to do what they're great at. And right. I, so I feel their pain when they're raising. Um, I think, yeah, I think if it's especially if it's your first time raising, it's it's not this fun fun thing. So you're not into the glamour and the cocktail parties. You're into the ship, shipping not. stuff. Yeah, absolutely not. It's 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 great. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying it's bad, or that other people shouldn't do it because um, I have to do that sometimes, and I I get it. But it's just not. It's not my favorite. Right. There's better things to be doing with your time. Oh, well, I can see where someone can get kind of caught up in the glamour of it all. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I, I I tweeted something recently that got got a lot of retweets. That was that. Uh, someone said, I'm a founder. And uh, someone else said to them, this was at a, at a Panera. They said, well, hey, you're at a Panera Bread and you just registered a domain. So you need to bring, <laughs> bring it bring it down a bit. It seems like people Simmer are- Simmer down now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People need to like understand that there are those that just love to say founder and they sure. love to say VC and they get all wrapped right, up in the glamour right. of all that. But there's 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 real work to be done. It's not just flying all over the place, right? There's, yeah. I assume there's a lot of legal frameworks and stuff. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> There's I've signed so many documents and I've learned so much um over the past year and a half especially that I never imagined I'd have to understand, mm-hmm. you know, these inner workings. I mean, everyone sees, oh, you ha- you're raising money and you have money and then you deploy money. Mm-hmm. That's great. There's so much more that goes on behind the scenes with lawyers and back office accounting and so many regulations. And so, um, it, in fact, you know, it's, it's, I have to think very carefully about what I can say here. Oh, wow. While I'm still raising the fund. Yeah. Interesting. So it kind of makes me think about like the, the abstract idea of, I want to buy a house. And then the, all right, I'm going to sign 50 pages of you know, like huge stack of yes. paperwork and all of the, the legal framework within getting a mortgage. Yeah, I would imagine so. I've never bought a house, but I would imagine it's p- pretty close to that. Yeah. yeah. Or I, maybe it's like I want to buy like a neighborhood. Oh, because you that's think a good of one. like not only forming the fund, but mm. then dealing with See, you're dozens gonna, of companies. You'll buy a house and you'll find that there's really nothing. You'll yeah. be like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> like oh, I can I've do this been, in my sleep. I've yeah. been doing paperwork like this for years. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of, um, uh, managing personalities. Um, um, and e- not too much ego, uh, on the founder side, especially mm-hmm. really, really sincere, interesting, unique founders. Um, but it's it is a little bit difficult when um there's so much going on at once. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I and I'm doing this a little bit differently than most funds do. So that's Okay, so let's talk about that. So sure. so why are you doing things differently? I assume that there are other people with multi-million dollar. You keep saying not too big, but yeah, it feel, t- feels like a lot to me. Okay. But you know, I'm yeah. sure there are billion dollar funds and 100 million dollar funds. Lots. But still, multi-million yeah. dollar funds, are there a lot of small-ish funds out there that Not are, really. really. No, there's there I mean there are a lot of first time quiet funds that don't kind of make a big noise mm-hmm. that are somewhere between two and ten million dollars mm-hmm. and they're doing what I'm doing which is establishing a track record mm-hmm. and um, so they, they can raise a, a bigger fund which is kind of the route but m- for the most part when you say micro f- VC you're talking about anywhere between 25 million and 100 million that's a micro that's a VC. micro yes Yes. Wow. So you're a nano. I'm. A, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> nano. Okay. I, I was thinking. A nano. F- trying fun. to figure out the word Pico for it. But yes. I'm a nano fun. I like that. <laughs> that reminds me of the old uh, iPods. But yes. Um. So, th- and then so I know some people uh, who have two, three, six million dollar funds. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's kind of where I'm going to be. Okay. So when, when someone, and again, we can speak in the abstract, so I don't want you to feel like I'm putting you on the spot, but when someone has a fund and you're the, the, the middle person or the middleman, as they say colloquially, then how do you pay the rent? How does the fund person get paid when you have founders who want to get paid and ship, when you have investors who very likely want to get paid a lot because they invested a lot, and then you are, uh, you know, overhead and management, but you still have to live. Right. So the, the normal, um, uh, um, model, Mm-hmm. is taken from the hedge fund model, which is two and 20. That's okay. kind of like your basic average way to do it, which means 20% carry, which is um, the pro- the profit share that the, the fund managers get to enjoy at the end of the day. So the thing becomes the next Facebook and you get 20% of that. Pretty much. And so, so I'll tell you, so the, tw- the 2% is the management fee mm-hmm. per year. And it, it tapers off, uh, the longer the fund goes. So if the fund is 10 years, then, you know, in your fifth year, you start to get like maybe one and a half percent because you're doing less with that fund. And then you start to have stacked funds. Hopefully, if you've done a good job, mm-hmm. you have two or three funds going at the same time. So you don't need to be charging these LPs or these limited partners who invested in you. You don't need to be charging them to a full two percent six years into the game if you've already done all the work t- mm-hmm. three years ago. Um, so the two percent, if you do the math on like a 50 million dollar fund that's enough to have a couple of uh partners to have an assistant to have an office travel pay the bills keep the mm. lights on it's not a great amount but it's it's a good solid amount and then do the math on that when it becomes a 200 million dollar fund or a billion dollar fund now a 10 million dollar fund or a 5 million dollar fund like more like what i'm doing that is um so i'm i'm just going to be poor for the <laughs> for seven years. Mm. <laughs> um, so I, I have enough to 
uh, let me go meet founders and mm. meet in, uh, potential investors and to um, take some potential investors bowling, which is my preference. <laughs> I made sure that that was in the budget. Right, bowling money. And I can eat and I can sleep soundly and um, and bring on a couple of people to help me. But it's very, very, uh, very bootstrapped and very kind of grassroots. Interesting. So when we think about numbers, like I'm listening and people are probably listening going, wow, $10 million funds, yeah. big numbers. Yeah. That's amazing. And, you know, we're bowling and going to Chipotle. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and and, and also, I mean, someone who's doing a $25 million fund, 500000 a year when you have one or two partners and you have to travel, you have to pay for all these conferences, right? you yeah, have to yeah. pay for your Health whole back care. office, everything. It's, I mean, these people aren't, you know, I don't feel sorry for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but it, it I, is, you have to really think about the math of it. And mm-hmm. so someone who's raising anywhere between, I'd say two and, and 40 or $50 million and it's just them or a couple of people, they're doing it for some really interesting uh, reasons. Not to say that bigger ones aren't. Right. I'm just saying that you kind of really know okay. that the ones that are doing the small ones are. Now the carry is interesting too. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I'm certainly not doing this, um, strictly out of the goodness of my heart. Well, so it sounds to me like this is a an investment by you as well. Absolutely. You are investing five to seven years of your time. That's right. You could go and get a job, you know, making more. Yeah. Being, you know, more successful early on, but sure. maybe the long seven, yeah. ten years down the road won't be it's the same. It's very much so like a, f- a founder mm-hmm. who believes in their company. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's another reason I can relate to founders. It's very much so like that. I believe in what I'm investing in. I mm-hmm. believe this is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. This is the way that I'll have the most success at it. And I think that in five to 10 years, I will uh, be a millionaire mm-hmm. because of it. So I'm very excited about that. It's not why I'm doing it, but it's, um, it, it's, it's part of why I'm, do- I guess yeah, it's part of why I'm doing it. You're building, it. right? And it's yeah. funny that you, it, it seems so obvious. And this is the thing about hindsight, right? Hindsight in this case is two minutes ago mm-hmm. where I was thinking, oh, wow, it's a late VC, all this money. You're the, you're a founder as well. Right. And yeah. you are founding your startup and your yeah. startup is this investment portfolio that is, you're, and you're in it f- not for a year, not for two years, but for a decade or more. That's right. Yeah. The, the legal length or the legal life of the fund is 10 years. Oh, wow. And so that's also when the LPs, limited partners are thinking about putting their money in, they're thinking it's going to be illiquid. For that amount of time, illiquid, not, which, yeah, not yeah, available. Exactly, it's going to be uh, for the most part, unless you know there may be this. Th- they're the Instagrams of the world that come along, right. and, and eighteen months into it, you're you're sitting pretty. But that's very rare. Mm-hmm. You don't please don't go into it thinking that right. as an LP or as an angel. Well, the thing that struck me also that was in, when you said that um, you might spend a year or two raising money. That made me think about the opportunity cost of the money that you that is being invested, where those uh, those investors kind of upstream have given you X million dollars, and they're not going to see anything right. for years. And right. even for the first two years, they could be calling you, hey, two years later, hey, so did you deploy? I'm going to use your terminology now that I've learned it. Did you <laughs> deploy that money yet? Well, no, we're still raising. That's opportunity cost for them to right. – anyway, that money's not going anywhere. Well, so, well, yeah. So, in some cases um – I have to figure out how to say this without getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. My lawyer will never hear this, no, hopefully. Please. But in some cases, you don't deploy until you've done a first close or you've raised a f- whole fund. But in other cases, you deploy right out the gate. Oh, really? Which is what I'm doing. Ah, I see. I'm, I've invested in, at, at this point, it's in six companies. I don't know when this is going to play, but okay. at this point, I've invested in six companies and uh got my first LP check in September, so six less than six months ago. So I'm on a tear. Is this a new way to do things? Is this risky or is this just a new, a no, new way I of thinking? No, I don't think it's I don't think it's a new way. I'm sure other people have done it before. It's just um again I'm doing the reason that what I'm doing is different mm-hmm. is that as someone I recently met said she had never seen someone start a VC fund from a standing start. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> right from zero, from from scratch. Usually, you start a comp- you start a VC fund because you're already an angel investor. You've invested in lots of companies. You have your own money. You have, you know, maybe ten percent of the fund you put in yourself. Right. You have people around you who can put in, um, or you've worked at a major fund and you want to do your own thing now, and 
again, you have this access to, to, to money and to other people that have money. And, um, you're, you know, that's how you start. And that's not to say that it's easy, but it is easier than starting with nothing. I mean, last year I was homeless for several days. Uh, I mean, I say days, and it actually was much longer than that. I, I've, I was homeless for a while. Mm -hmm. So to start from nothing, mm -hmm. to go here, that's why it's different. So that's why I'm doing it the way I am, because I'm kind of, I'm hacking my way into venture capital. But we're still talking about multi-million dollar funds, which is like right. what's, so, what's cool about it. So when I think about qualifications and, and you know, uh, like for example, it's funny. Someone was saying, "Like, what is uh?" Someone was telling me, "What is Batman's superpower?" Is he's rich? Yeah, exactly. I had to right, think you know about I mean? that for a no, second. Yeah, know, he's rich. Right, You're right. Like, privilege is Bruce Wayne's. That's that's, that's amazing. That's his power. Yeah. That's pretty crazy to think about that. So when I think about like, well, you know, if I meet, someone, why are you a VC? Who who are you? Why are you so fancy that I'm not a VC? Right. We get into this kind of armchair quarterbacking. Mm -hmm. And I might think to myself, well, this person is super rich because they made money on Facebook. And that is simply their qualification, which is arguably either luck or skill or a little of both. Sure. And then, or maybe they are like a Ivy League graduate that um, worked for a big fund and has an MBA of some kind. Maybe they're not rich, but they are like rich adjacent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I know a lot of those people. You know what I mean? Yep. And like, because I, I again, I think of myself as an armchair quarterback. I look and I hear, oh wow, this twenty-seven-year-old is now uh, working at such and such a fund. Like, how in the heck did you pull that off? Sure. You know, again, armchair quarterback. Like, man, why am I not like that? But then I realize I don't know anybody. I don't have any money. So that's right. you know, kind of how it starts. You just said that there was a time when you were homeless. That's not the kind of thing that a multi-million dollar Facebook type person would say, nor is it the type of person that a Yale graduate would kind of say. That's is right. that coming from zero, your unique qualification that allows you to spot a founder that's going to maybe have, have be more hungry than another one? Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the things, yeah. It's that relatability. Uh, I mean, in a lot of cases, um, you know, kind of seen tougher times than some of the founders that I invest in. But I mean, come on, I hear, I hear some amazing stories from people and it's not not everyone that i'm investing is like down and out no of course but it, there's a grit there you go. that well said. is yes that is just there built in mm -hmm. to founders who have something against them when they walk out the door every morning you know like for me i'm black a black woman who's gay mm -hmm. and so i have to figure out okay when i when i leave the house or the wherever you know i have to say okay what am i going to be faced with today what mm -hmm. is going to come at me today because of one of those things or a couple of those things right and when you it, it becomes it's almost like it's it's so normal now it's so normalized i'm going something's going to happen so when you have people who have had there's a lot of people that start on, they say they start on third base. So Right, right, right. They, I always talk about playing the game at the easiest difficulty setting. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So when you have people who just, they figure it out. They have had to figure stuff out their mm -hmm. entire life. They've had to survive. They've had to uh, maybe be two or three times faster, better, smarter, just to be seen as equal. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's a lot of like uh, uh, Ivy League grads that I that are underrepresented. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, you hear them talk and they had to do so much more just to get, just to be kind of in the room. Mm. Those are the kind of people I want to invest in. Right. And those are people I can spot a mile away. I can have a 15 minute conversation with someone and I know that, you know, we talk about the downturn in the market being so, so horrible right now. Mm -hmm. These people aren't running scared. They're like, okay, bring it. Yeah. Like we'll we'll turn ten cents into a dollar. Let's make it happen. We'll make it stretch. We'll, those are the people that you want to invest in. Mm -hmm. You want to invest in. You want to invest in the Mark Zuckerbergs of life. Of Absolutely. course you do. Yes. But you don't want to dismiss or overlook the ones who are saying, right. "How would I have done Facebook ten times cheaper and ten times faster?" Right. That's an interesting place that a lot of people that I'm seeing are in.
people might think hear numbers like that and think that that's silly. But if you look at some of the smaller boots, like there's a there's a bootstrapped uh, dating site called Plenty of Fish. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it was like one guy, yeah. you know, and he was yeah. making like fifty million a year. Yeah, and, he hacked his way. Yeah, you know, he hacked his way through yeah. it, right? And d- without any any funding. The other thing that makes me think about it is it is not about a culture of exclusion. It's about a, a wider net about including yeah, everybody. Exactly, exactly, and um, that that's big for me too. Like uh, I, I. Um, you know, one of the things that has happened uh, that I've been turned off by is, um, if someone is like dogging another company or like other founders who right, are right, underrepresented right. and like, there's enough room for a lot yeah. of people here and we all need to kind of, we're all in this together. So, you know, there's no need for that sort of energy, I think. And I, I mean, some of my best friends were white. <gasps> You know, I know. It, one of the things that I thought was interesting is I, I recently read an uh, uh, an article where uh, Trevor Noah, who now took over mm-hmm. the Daily yes. Show, was trying to get a little more of an inclusive uh, group of people into his uh, writers' room, and he went out and said, "All right, you know, let's let's mix it up a little bit." And he wasn't getting any uh, resumes, and right. he tried to figure out, "Well, what's going on?" Like, I mean, here I am, and I'm you know, black man, I'm running a TV show, and I want to have a, a, a nice, inclusive group of people who are my writers and I've asked for that and I can't get them. And it turned out that it was that uh, the people he wanted to hear from didn't have agents. Sure. Oh, yeah. So there yeah. was this, That's there really was this interesting. Yeah. So there's something as simple as I don't even know what door to knock on. Like, Absolutely. So he yeah. actually went out and leapfrogged the agents and found, you know, comedians he knew working in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, hey, did you hear that I'm hiring writers? And oh, they were that's like, well, great. we had no idea. We had no, well, how come? Didn't your agent tell you? Well, I don't have an agent. Yeah. No, that's a really interesting thing. I mean, I'm actually doing that, but I hadn't really figured out a way to kind of explain it. That's really cool because um, I, I I call myself like I want to be like the on-ramp uh, for underrepresented founders who who don't have a network. You know, they're always saying, um, they're always saying like, you know, get a warm introduction to a VC and that's the best way to do it. Because if you can get a warm introduction, then you have pluck and you have, it's not, sometimes it's not that easy to get a warm intro to, to Andreessen, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You, you um, like catch him coming out of an elevator in a hotel. He sure, probably doesn't want to talk to you. Sure. So, uh, plus he blocked me on Twitter, so that's not going to happen. Oh, now. He's lovely. <laughs> no, I like I like Mark. Mark is an investor in my fund. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's He's exciting. Very quietly, um, um, did that, and you know he he's controversial. Like he, mm-hmm. there's a there's a lot of people that are that uh, I yell at a lot on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, who are also investors in my fund? So I'll I'll yell at them and um, tell them that they're being asses, and um. While you, while you work with them professionally. Yeah, because, I mean, there's some people's money I won't take, absolutely. Like, I just won't, and I won't say who those are, but. Of course. Um, I, th- yeah, there's, that's, that could be a, probably a whole episode <laughs> about, uh, about. So you, that. you get to choose who you invest in, you get to choose who you take money from. Yeah. And presumably the, uh, the kinds of companies that you want to invest in, uh, people have come to you for that reason that you're finding the the gems. You're finding the yeah. ones that people aren't finding. That's right. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of my investors are excited that I have the um, the access to so many founders that they they thought weren't there. Mm-hmm. You know, in some cases they weren't looking hard enough. I mean, in most cases that's what it was. But in some cases it's like it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same thing I said about like having the access to a warm intro. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes they don't know exactly where to go, so I can then be that bridge on both sides and I'm happy to. So where can people who are listening learn about Backstage Capital. Yeah, so we have a new website. It's backstagecapital.com, which is very original. pretty handy. Yeah, yeah. It is nice. pretty, pretty spectacular. I like that it's not .co or .io. No, not going to do it. Yep. Not going to do that. No, it's backstagecapital.com, um, which is kind of like our little our hub. Mm-hmm. And then I'm all over, uh, personally all over Twitter and Instagram and all that at Arlen was here, A-R-L-A-N was here. And, you know, everything links back to backstage. So, and I truly, I know I probably don't sound like it, but I truly love being behind the scenes and letting, letting the founders sort of shine. That's my deal. But I'll, I'll still yell at people on Twitter. <laughs> I just, that's f- too much fun. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This has been another episode of Hansel Minutes, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>